Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be going through the the QuickScope plugin, which is a plugin I found uh, literally two days ago after seeing it, someone use it in a video. Well, not use it, but I saw it in someone's config. And uh, to explain what it does, I'm just going to explain the typical uh, Vim user experience. So let's say you're, you're on this line, right? Uh, the current line I'm on. And say for some reason you want to jump all the way to the word perform, right? Uh, typically, you know, they, they, um, recommend using F, well, you can use W to scroll across words, right? So if you can do the mental math and say, okay, that's, I don't know, seven words, uh, I was close, it was actually nine words, you can get to the word perform, right? But let's say you want to do, actually perform is, uh, I'm trying to see which word, oh, hmm. Let's say you wanted to get to the word trained. That's a better word. Um, I wanted to get to the word trained quickly and you don't want to bother with the mental math. You can try, you know, FT and like, okay, just keep FTing until you get to trained. But that's, you know, it's, it's not as efficient. Uh, basically, in order to scroll across the line, you do need to do a little, like a little bit, a little bit of uh, preemptive math in your head. And, you know, it's not too much. You get used to it after a while, but there's just an even more efficient way available, which is the QuickScope plugin. So, oh, it's at the bottom here. Yeah? If you type in QuickScope uh, toggle, it will uh, toggle the plugin on and off. And as you may or may not see, uh, so I have, I guess, a bad highlighting choice for a video. But uh, if you can see, if your resolution is high enough, you can see that uh, the capital A yeah, is bold and has an underscore. Uh, well, not underscore, is underlined. If you can see the underline, that's all that matters. And so is the E, yeah, and the W in network, and the B and B, the D, yeah, so on and so forth. And what these uh, underlines represent is a unique character target such that if I say, you know, if I F D, it will, you know, put me on the D in train. It essentially makes... Uh, the scrolling in a line a lot more efficient by trying to find a unique character such that if you uh, f to that character if you f that character it will take you all the way uh, to the character in that word so uh, it again finds a unique character in the word so convolutional the, the easiest one the unique is c for neural network it's the e because there's an n over here in convolutional well, there's two n's so it picks the e because there's no e here for network, it picks a W because N, E, and T all appear before the W. So to get to, to the word network, the quickest way is uh, FW. And, you know, so on and so forth. You can see here with the word two, there's just, there's no way because um, there's a T that appears here and there's an O that appears here. So there's no way you can possibly get to the word two over there. Uh, so that's how that works. And um, I have another example. Well, no other example, actually. Well, it's just the config files. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can find a line with... Uh, sorry, I just want to see if I... I didn't think this through. Okay, this line. Okay, so there are two highlighting groups, a primary and a secondary highlight group. So the, the plugin will do its best to either try and get you to the word in one stroke or to the word in um, well, two strokes. So uh, getting to the word model, I can FM, that's one stroke. Um, oh, shift FM. Or if I want to get to the word persistent, you can see now it's italicized because that's uh, in my setup, the secondary highlight group, uh, I, I say italicize the word because they're more rare, so I'm willing to italicize. So it's italic. So to get to per persistent, um, I'd have to do 2FP. I get to uh, persistent in 2FP. You know, two it's still one stroke, but I, I think you know what I mean. Uh, the reason it's, you know, secondary, because it already, um, you know, P is already here. Uh, and I'm assuming it tried all the other letters in... Let's see. Yeah, it tried all the other letters in the word. So E was already taken in, you know, over here, E... It tried the whole word, it couldn't find a primary one, so then it tried secondary and it found secondary P was easiest. 
the same with our f in file. It already has a primary f in from, and I think you get it by now. It just makes surfing across the line a whole lot easier. So if I want to get all the way to the word exists, I now just have to fx, you know? Or if I want to, you know, shift f to get to, to let's say, the word model, I mean, all I need to do is shift fd. It's, it makes it visually clear, and it doesn't interrupt any mappings. It's just, it's an all-around good plugin. And again, if you want to um, uh, turn it off, you know, you can quick skip toggle and then turn it back on when you need it. And yeah, um, so to the settings. Uh, so um, the plugin is by a guy called Unblivable. Um, yeah, that guy. Uh, uh, first setting is you can uh, have it only trigger when you press F, Shift F, or T or T. Um, well, you can actually set any, I think you can set any uh, key. I'm not really going to show this. It, for some reason, just uh, breaks in my setup. If I set the setting and go over some line that it has trouble, uh, like passing, it just it, it completely breaks. So uh, just note you can trigger on key press. The next is the actual highlighting groups. So um, this is for the GUI stuff. Uh, you can set the color, you know, just if you know how to highlight is what you do. In my case, my highlighting is pretty simple. I don't change the color. I just underline and bold. It's clear enough for me and is not too distracting. And yeah. And then the, the secondary is underlined, bold, and italic. So if you want mine, you can do that. Uh, next is uh, these guys. So if I do this, if I just zoom out a bit. Um, so in the docs, it states that if it's, if it's not working properly, if it's breaking your color scheme or your color scheme is breaking it, just uh, put it in this, uh, in this group, auto CMD, make it an auto CMD, and then make sure to put uh, this chunk of code. Uh, after the after you've loaded your color scheme in your VMRC, so uh, that's just there for if you need it. Uh, next, next we have uh, mappings. So um, as per usual, if you want to map the quick scope uh, toggle, uh, this is how you do it. Uh, map the I don't actually map it. That's such a rare thing that I actually turn off the the quick scoping. So uh, that's there if you want to map it. Um, if you want to disable on startup, you can set um, let G uh, QS enable equal zero and you are done. Uh, it's enabled by default. Just keep that in mind. And then if you want to disable it for a specific buffer, this is what you have to do. Again, I'm not someone to disable it. Huh. Yeah, I'm not someone to disable it for uh, at all, in fact. But that's if you're very picky about that. And then the last one, yeah, which is an actual useful setting. Uh, let is to turn off the, the quick scoping on longer lines. So if you have massive lines that, you know, uh, you know, longer, in this case, you could set the max thing to be 80 lines. So that once, well, 80 characters, not 80 lines. So once the line is, is longer than 80 characters, it won't attempt a quick scope because I think at that point you, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you, you know what I mean. By default, it's set to a thousand. Well, by default, it's, what is happening here? By default, it's set to 1000. So i um, not sure what that's all about. I don't have issues. So I might use this if at some point it breaks something, but typically all the documents I write, I have a rule of thumb, never longer than, you know, 60 to 80 characters anyways. So I'm fine there. And then this last one is accepted characters. So uh, if we come here, um, if we come to this line, if I just go to the beginning, you'll note that it doesn't actually try to highlight the, <clears throat> the periods or the, the brackets or the quotes or because these are all, they all count as, um, if I do, if I W through this, they all count as uh, words or word separators in their own right. And they are not, you know, 
they're not being highlighted. And the reason is because uh, just visually, you would sort of know when you're going to, I mean, I know there's a, if I want to get to the first open parentheses, I can see it visually. There's no need to highlight it or anything. But if you want to, you can just put um, your parentheses in this list and it will count it towards, okay, it needs to highlight it. And uh, yeah, well, the et cetera is not needed, yeah? You'd have to type out all the alphabet as far as I know. You'd have to type all the alphabet, all the numbers, the uppercase variants as well, and then add your parentheses. So that's how you would do all of that. And yeah, that's all of it. Not a long plugin. So I will check you guys in the next video.